This is the solution video for question 15 from section B of the fourth sample test for CSAT. In this question, we're told in decimal or binary, a positive integer is called a rep unit if it can be written in a respective base, i.e. if we're considering decimal, if it can be written in base 10 or binary base 2, using only the digit 1. Given this, we're asked to find all n and p integers greater than 0, such that a binary rep unit with n digits can be written as a decimal rep unit with p digits. And once we find the such n and p, we're asked to prove the conclusion of which n and p work. The first thing to do in this question is to get a better understanding of what a rep unit in binary means. So it's only been a rep unit in binary means that if we wrote it out in base 2, we would just get a string of 1s. But that is equivalent to being 1 less than a power of 2. Because if we increase that by 1, essentially all the 1s flip to zeros, and we had a 1 at the beginning. So we know our binary rep units are in the form 2 to the n minus 1 for some n. And this n is in fact the number of digits in the rep unit. So say we had a 1, 1, 1, that would be 7 which is 2 to the 3 minus 1, which makes sense because we had three digits in our binary number to begin with. So this is, I this is ideal, and this is our formula for a binary rep unit with n digits. So now our next port of call is try and get a handle on what we think about this conjecture. What do we think are n and p such that this will be true? Do we think there's a lot of them? Do we think there's not many at all? Let's try a few examples. So 2 to the 1 minus 1 is 1, which is uh, a decimal rep unit, because it's just 1. 2 to the 2 minus 1 is 3, which is not a decimal rep unit, because it's certainly not a string of 1s in decimal. And we go on, and we discover that up to 2 to the 8, only 2 to the 1 minus 1 gives a decimal rep unit. So we've got a nice formula for the binary rep units, and we've checked the first few numbers, and we can't see any particular pattern. We can see that one is, but none of the others are, so there's nothing we can immediately grab onto. So let's look at what the decimal rep units look like. So decimal rep unit is just a string of ones, so we could have one like this, one, 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 one. So that would be when p is five. So can we come up with a better representation than this? Because coming up with any equation with this in is gonna be a bit messy. But you can see that if we times this by 9, then we're 1 less than a multiple of 10. Indeed, if we times by 9, we see that this is 10 to the 5 minus 1. And this would work for any string of 1s. And this 5 is the number of digits. So what we can actually say is that a decimal rep unit is of the form 10 to the p minus 1, where p is the number of digits, which generates this. And then we want to divide through by 9. So this is what all decimal rep units look like. So now, what do we need? Well, we need 2 to the n minus 1 to equal 10 to the p minus 1 over 9 for some n and p. We're looking for pairs of n and p that do this. So times in that equation 3 by 9, we have 9 lots of 2 to the n minus 1 to equal 10 to the p minus 1. And let's simplify that out a bit. There's no point having constants on both sides. So we'll have 9 times 2 to the n. Minus 8 is equal to 10 to the p. So trying to find all the instances of n and p working from this are very difficult. And with the examples we did, we'd be very inclined to say there's not that many possible answers. So what we're, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to look at criteria that could be imposed on n and p to make this not hold. So we're going to try and show that this is false most of the time. So... How could we do that? Well, if you've seen modular arithmetic, that's generally the premise of the trick here, but we don't need to specifically do that to explain a reasoning. So what we're essentially going to do in formal terms is take mod 16 of this. But what that means in more elementary terms is if n was 4 or bigger, then 2 to the n would be a multiple of 16. And if p was 4 or bigger, this would be a multiple of 16, because 10 is 2, ta 2 times 5. So we have a 2 to the 4 if we did 10 to the 4. 
So this is a multiple of 16 for P greater than or equal to 4, and this is a multiple of 16 for N greater than or equal to 4. Well, if we've got a multiple of 16 minus 8, then that's not a multiple of 16. So we know for N greater than or equal to 4 and P greater than or equal to 4, this, this being true would imply that something that's not a multiple of 16 equals something that is a multiple of 16, which makes no sense. And so for n greater than or equal to 4 and p greater than or equal to 4, we can't possibly have a solution to this. So all we need to actually check is n less than 4 or p, or p less than 4 for solutions. Because outside of this scenario, we know we've not got any. So for n less than 4, p less than 4, well, we've checked nearly all of them up here. We've exhausted all the n less than 4 cases. And p less than 4, well, when we get a four-digit number in these examples, we stop. So there's only one more to actually check. 2 to the 9 minus 1, which is 511, which is not a rep unit. And then 2 to the 10 minus 1 is 1,023, so we don't need to check that because that's p equals 4. And so looking through our examples, this is where all the possible answers could lie. And we see that this is our only one. So n equals 1, p equals 1 is our only pair of n, p, and we have non, uh, n nothing else, and we've proved it by looking at this equation and exhausting all the other possibilities.